right, welcome everybody. Um, this is our only meeting in December. All the holidays seem to be on Saturdays and Sundays, so we're not gonna be meeting again until the new year. Um, we have a wonderful program today with Dean Moskowitz from Rock Steady Boxing. And I hope you are all ready to do some boxing. So um, let me tell you a little bit about Dan. Uh, Dan, it's not Dan, Dean, sorry about that. Um, with 25 years of martial arts experience, a rock steady boxing certification and a loving heart, Dean makes the perfect coach for anyone at any level. And I've heard that from several people who take his classes. Our virtual boxing program is fun and will make a big difference in your fight against Parkinson's. We have helped people, uh, 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 we have helped hundreds of people with a wide array of symptoms. We all work on balance, strength, mobility, and posture. Coach Moskowitz and his team strive daily to help many different people. Their love and encouragement helps their athletes enjoy a feeling of empowerment during the workout program. And having done boxing for, I think, five or six years before the pandemic and not having done it since, I really miss it. And I can't wait to see your presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dean, and he's going to tell you about the program. And we're going to do some exercise. So okay, thank you, Sharon, very much for having me. And welcome, everybody. I'm sure some people might watch it recorded later, so welcome to them as well. Uh, this is Rock City Boxing. It's uh, Right now, we're going to do a virtual version. Some of you may have done it in person before. And it's a boxing program that is centered around exercises, which will help you battle back against your progression of the Parkinson's. So everyone experiences it differently. You know, some people have tremors, balance issues, um, stiffness, you know, it could be cognitive for some people. So boxing tries to address all of that. We try to do, you know, a lot of footwork drills, a lot of strength drills. We'll do the boxing to increase our range of motion. And, you know, my goal is not to make you a professional boxer, which I did have a, my own career in com competitive martial arts. And I'm glad that I found this instead of getting hit in the head for a living. So it's lovely to work with people like you. Um, I do Zoom, I do in-person. I work at different assisted living communities. Uh, I work with memory care communities, but the Parkinson's community I've been working with for six years, uh, a couple years before the pandemic. And, you know, we shut down during the pandemic. We're back to in-person now. And I'm so happy happy to be here to show you guys what the program looks like. So the workout we're going to do today uh, will be a pretty basic workout. We're going to get you guys moving, but every time you would do a different workout with me, I try not to make it uh, too boring or, you know, the same movements so that you get bored. I want to keep it interesting. I want to keep challenging you guys. And I incorporate a lot of exercises that are not really boxing, but more so a physical therapy exercise or a fitness exercise that I think will help you. So one thing that's important to remember, if you have any limitations like shoulder, back, knees, neck, anything that is bothersome to you, which we all have different things, try to just watch out for yourself. Make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to hurt you or set you back. I'll try to offer modifications for each exercise uh, for people who may be in the chair or moving at a different pace. And then if you don't think something suits you, then please skip it and just wait for exercise that does. And I'll keep you know, reiterating that throughout the practice. Uh, so ideally, I like to have enough room around me to work out. I don't need any equipment right now, maybe just a little water next to you, and we can probably get started. I think at the end, we're going to open the floor for a question and answer. Um, and I think in the meantime, if anyone has questions, they just put it in the chat. I'm pretty sure that's how you guys do it. And if uh, there's any issue with my sound or my video, let me know and I'll try to help you guys. Mm -hmm. Normally in our program, I do like for people to have a hand weights, you know, but we don't need them today. But in general, if you have like a two pound hand weight or a three pound hand weight at home, that's good for some of the exercises in our group. And if you got boxing gloves, you may be able to put them on today as well. So if you guys are ready, we'll get some room for ourselves. <clears throat> we'll stand up nice and tall and we'll kind of get started. Give you guys a minute to get ready back a bit more. All right, everybody. You guys think you're ready to start? 
Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, excellent. I got a thumbs up from everyone. Ray, let's start off with a little bit of movement with good posture, moving our arms in front of our body and out to the side. And I'm crossing the arms over left, over right, right over left. I'm just trying to get some blood flow to my shoulders, my chest, my back, standing tall and just moving those arms. Let's do about 10 of those. I'll try and check on you guys. There's quite a few of us, but normally I try to keep an eye on you. And if there's anything I can <clears throat> give uh, advice to, I will. All right, very nice. Hands on the side. And let's go one arm up in front, one arm swings back, and we alternate. Again, addressing the shoulders. <clears throat> Get those moving. Back. About five more. One, two, three, four, and five. Nice job. Maybe we check in on our stance. I want a nice stance that is at least shoulder width apart. If I'm too close, I'm not going to have good balance. A little bit out with those legs. Hands out to the side, and I'll roll my wrist a little bit. Get my wrist moving, some of the tendons into my forearms. And again, all the blood flow is going to help to get that tissue moving a little better. Get us ready for some of this boxing. Shake it out a little bit. Let's roll the arm in. I bend the arm and I roll. I'm getting now blood flow into the center of that arm by the elbow joint. Okay, let's do about five of these. One, two, three, four, and five. Nice job. I lower those arms. Maybe now I can bring the feet together. And if you feel comfortable, just kind of moving the knees left and right. Just kind of Getting the tendons and the knees moving, maybe you do small circles with both legs, kind of rolling them a little bit. You can try that to either direction and stand up nice and tall. If you're standing and you ever need help with balance, you know, hold a chair or the wall or something next to you to make sure you got good balance. But I'm going to try to press down my toes and raise up with my heels going in the air, doing a calf raise. Kind of engaging my ankles a little bit, my calf muscles, and of course, working that balance a little bit. This can still be done from the chair. You just press the toes down and the heels come up. Do about three or four more. I always try to get 10 to 15 of each exercise, but if you have to stop early, you can always stop early. Let's march it out a little bit, move those legs. And now, it doesn't feel as natural, but I want you to try to swing the arms when you march. That's a tough one, right? For a lot of us, is swinging the arms when we walk. It's not something we think about all the time. But this will make sure that I'm working more parts of my brain by using my legs and my arms at the same time. And we can count to 10, use our voices too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, nice job. Slow it down. Take some nice deep breaths, try to breathe it in the nose and out the mouth. I keep the legs separated. I'll do a little stretch with my arm. I'll try to go up and over. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. And other side. We may feel a little stiff, a little tight. It's the morning, it's the warm up. Hopefully, towards the end of the workout, we're feeling a little better. Now I bring my arm across my body all the way in front, and then I grab my own arm around the shoulder of the, the arm, and I pull it into my chest, and I get a good squeeze there. And I let it down, other arm all the way across the body, I pull my own arm in, I get a good stretch. Four, three, two, one, and down, very good. Now the neck, we do need a little bit of range of motion with the neck, but it may make some people feel uncomfortable. If you feel dizzy at all doing this, you just stop. But I'm looking to my left and looking to my right. I, I want to be able to move my neck without having to turn my whole body. You know, if someone calls my name, or I just got to look to the side. Okay, how about we try to tilt a little bit? So we're looking forward and our ear tilts toward the shoulder. Almost like I'm trying to turn my head sideways a little bit. These are just normal ranges of motion for the neck, trying to get some blood flow there. Always skip an exercise if it makes you feel comfortable. And last one, I center myself and I stretch my chin down and eyes go toward the toes and then head back up. 
And we'll do a couple of those. My chin goes down, stretching that neck and up. And one more, I stretch it down and up. Nice job. So some people, you know, can roll the neck and do circles and stuff. That tends to make me, you know, a little bit on the dizzy side. But if you're okay with rolling your neck, then you can roll your neck as well. If not, you can just move on from here, taking a good deep breath. We're going to bring our heels up as we're kicking them up and back. It's almost like I'm trying to touch my rear end with my own heel. It might not go that high. I might just lift my leg off the floor a little bit. But this is working my balance and my hamstring muscle, getting my hamstrings warmed up a little bit. So this is called a hamstring curl. You're curling your heel up and back. Good. Let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can even touch your own hand if you want. And ah, all right. Legs are going to go out. Very nice. And I'm going to try and bring my hands out to the side. I'll do a little bit of twisting, just a little bit to the side. I use my hands kind of to indicate how much my abdomen and my torso is twisting. You can bend the knees a little bit if you want. And now we can bring the arms in and we can just kind of twist a little easier there. Let's do five. If twisting hurts the lower back, which you made for some people, then you just skip it or twist less. And time. So when we twist like that, our core muscles are forced to work. We want a strong core to protect our back, to keep our posture and our gait strong. Let's stand up nice and tall. Roll those shoulders up and back. We're almost done with the warm up. You guys are doing great. Not as fun as the boxing, but we have to move our body head to toe. These are the small exercises that make a big difference throughout our day. And the more often you do them, the better for you. And time. All right, so a little bit of fitness here, getting our, our heart pumping a little more, getting us ready for boxing. We'll do a standing or seated jumping jack. I don't jump at all. I actually just step. So it should be called the stepping jack. I step to the side, my hand goes up. I step to the center, my hands go down. Good. I step to the side, my hands go up. Center, hands go down. Good. So I'm stepping. If you were feeling 110% and your knees feel brand new, which I know is hard sometimes, you could try an actual jump and do a jumping jack. If not, you do your steppers. Good. All right. We got some athletes over here. Let's do five. One, good. two, three. Four and five. All right, fabulous job. Nice work. Now I recommend to walk it off. We've been standing in the same spot, so we want to let our legs recalibrate a little bit and get some blood pumping back. We just kind of pace it out or walk around our room, focusing on keeping a good posture. Good. And then slowly make my way back. I kind of wiggle it out a little bit. I pick the legs up a bit. And we're going to try some squats, and again, to strengthen the legs, and then we'll move on to some more fitness. With a squat, you can always hold something for balance. If you don't feel comfortable doing a squat, you can do a knee raise instead of a squat. But this is just like sitting into a chair and then standing up out of my chair. So we have to do that every single day. We get up out of bed in the morning. So it's just like sitting up out of bed. I'm seated, stand up. I go back to seated, and I stand up. I see some of you guys already started. Try five to 10 on your own. No more than 10 for your first round, but we want to try to do at least five. And if you're seated, I would say to do knee raises instead. Good, good balance and time. All right, very nice. And then just a little tip for the future. You guys all look like you have pretty good form. One thing I don't want to do when I squat is I don't want my knees in. I want to keep a good separation between my legs. And I, again, I don't want those knees coming in. But otherwise, you guys are looking very good. Let's do a couple air push-ups here, which is the same idea as a regular push-up. If you're feeling great, you could hit push-ups on the floor. You could also do them against a wall or a tabletop. If not, we pull the arms back while we're standing. We press the arms all the way out, and we pull them all the way back. Press forward, and then you pull back. And when you do this pull back, you're engaging those back muscles, which will help to hold a good posture. And if you're pushing off a wall or the floor or a tabletop, you're strengthening those shoulders as well, the chest muscles. Let's do five more. One, 
two, three, four, and five. Very nice, you guys. And then march it out. Keep it moving. So my idea and the premise of this program a lot of times is to keep you guys moving the whole time. We want to try our best, besides a couple water breaks here and there, is to stay moving, right? To promote as much dopamine in the brain as we can and try and help ourselves be as strong as we can with as best stamina as we can. One more round of jumping jacks and we can do some boxing. So we're gonna do again, our step out to the side, my hands go up, I step back, they go down. I'm doing my jumping jacks side to side. Try them out, do about 10 right here. And if again, you wanna jump, you can. Maybe your legs are not feeling so steady, you can just use the arms, it's really up to you. And count with me on the last five. One, use those voices. Two, three, four, and five. All right, walk it out. Very nice job. Walk it out, try and breathe. And again, we may not all be going at the same pace. No, odds are we're not. Some people are gonna move quicker. Some people are more steady. Go at your own pace. And if you wanna go faster than you can, but I always say start a little slower, and then when you're sure that you can do more, you do more, okay? There's always the next workout. Ready, let's go. Feet in, good balance, one last set of squats, but this time with the hands up like a boxer. When I go down, I'm gonna come up and punch one and two. Do a couple punches now, ready? So we squat down, punch one and two when I come up, good. Squat down, punch one and two. Five more. Down, punch one and two. Again, down, punch one and two. Couple more. Down, punch one and two. Let's do one more. Down, punch one and two. And time. Very nice work, you guys. If you want a little sip of water, take a little sip of water. If you have boxing gloves, because you've done it in the past, you can put them on right now, and we'll do a little bit of boxing. You guys are doing great. We'll start in about a minute, give you guys a minute to take water, to get gloves. And if you didn't have gloves and you wanted to use hand weights instead of gloves, you could use hand weights. And then, you know, nothing in the hands will work great as well. You're still going to get a good workout. We'll start in about 15 seconds. You guys are doing awesome. So when we do boxing, uh, I'll just coach a little bit as you guys are getting ready. The legs, I like them again with pretty good distance between them to hold my balance. If I'm in the chair, your back can be against the chair or you can sit forward and take your back off the chair, kind of scoop to the edge of that chair so you can move that body a bit more. Because we're gonna be doing a lot of movement with our body, not just our arms. So I'm gonna show you guys how that movement looks. Hands are gonna be in the center, legs on the side. We'll get into a fighting stance later on. Again, it's kind of like that twisting earlier. I'm kind of moving my shoulders, moving my torso, bending the knees, feeling my, my base and my, my foundation and my balance before I even start moving the arms. Now I can extend the arm out as I do that movement. And again, if twisting doesn't serve you or you don't feel like it's helping your back, it's kind of hurting you, you just stay right here and you just move the arms only. But if I got a healthy back, I want to move my arms and my body. Let's go 10 together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, take some nice deep breaths. Let's move those legs and multitask by making some circles forward with those arms as we're moving those legs. And if this gets tough for you, you can just keep the legs still. You don't have to move them. And time, take a breath. The trick to boxing, which took me a long time to figure out, hopefully you guys figure it out quicker, is breathing as I'm exercising. Sometimes I get so excited, I love throwing these punches pretty fast and I forget to breathe. So try and breathe through it, right? Hands up, let's do some hooks this time with a small bend in my arm and I'm going across more to the side. These are a bit shorter in. Before you guys were extending your arms all the way out, 
these are hooks going a little bit more side to side. I like to bring my elbow up a little bit. Good, cutting across the middle. Breathing, let's do 10, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good, move those legs. Keep those arms moving a little bit. Make some good deep breaths. So in boxing, as you're marching, if you need a full rest, you can take a full rest. We have straight punches, okay, down the middle. I'm not gonna confuse you with too much boxing terminology. We have hooks, which I consider going side to side. And then another punch we know in boxing is the uppercut, where we kind of scoop up the middle. Have again, a small bend in my arm. And if you have that, you know, that strong base, I can almost bend and twist. And it takes time to feel more comfortable with these movements. But as long as you're trying and you're moving the body left and right, you know you're getting a good workout here. Let's go for 20 of this one. One, two, three. Four, scoop up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more uppercuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nice job, excellent. And then I give you small periods of time to breathe in between. I recommend doing something while you're resting. I call it an active rest. So if you notice, I'm walking forward and I'm walking backward. I'm just taking three or four paces forward, three or four paces back. Walking backwards may get tricky for some of us. If it's unsafe for you, I don't want you to do it, but if you think you can handle it, it's a good skill to work. You can also work a little side to side stepping, left and right. These are just things you can do while we're resting and time. All right, very nice, you guys. Let's do all the punches together. We'll go straight. Then we'll do hooks and then we'll do uppercuts. We're gonna do 10 of each one. So hands up, we'll go 10 forward. Ready, one, two, three, four, five. Keep your good posture, seven, eight, nine, 10. Hooks now, one, two, side to side, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then uppercuts up the center, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice job. Let me kind of scroll through right here. You guys are wonderful. You guys look like great athletes. You guys are really trying. Again, if you want to go faster than my pace, you go ahead and just surpass me. If you need to go slower, go slower. Let's do it once more. Ten of each one. And I'll let you guys kind of do it on your own if you like. Ten straight, ten hooks, and ten uppercuts. Let's give it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, time. Sorry, I got muted there for a second. Very nice job. Breathe, catch that breath. That's a review of our basic punches. Now we're going to work a little bit of boxing footwork. If for you, it gets tougher to do some of these movements, I want you to try them just really slow down, okay? If it's easier for you, then you go faster. Again, we're all going to go at a different pace. Hands up like a boxer. The first one, my legs are on the same line. I'm stepping forward into a fighting stance and stepping out. So if I don't know what a fighting stance is, it's just like I'm taking a step forward and then I'm taking a step back. And I'm alternating one time on my left leg and back, one time on my right leg and back. Good. And it's up to you. If you want to challenge yourself, you can take a bigger step or you can bend that knee a little bit when you're stepping. Good, almost making it into a lunge. But since we got the gloves on, hands are up. It's more of a boxing step forward and back. Let's do 10 if you can. One, straighten those legs. Two, and again, even if you're in the chair, you're still stepping from your chair the same way. Four, keep going. Five, maybe you step with a punch. Six, seven. Oh, I like that, good. Step and punch. Eight, nine, one more, 10. Very good, excellent work, you guys. To relieve the legs a little bit, I either walk or I kind of kick them out a little bit sometimes. 
If you need balance, you can hold the wall. You can do little circles with the knee, or you can just kind of wiggle the leg out, letting some blood go back to the muscles. And when you're ready, find good posture. Let's walk it forward and back a couple of times. Hands up. We walk it forward and back a couple of times. Good. Again, if I'm not able to do that, maybe I just walk in place or march from the chair, whatever I can do. All right, good. So, so far, everyone I see is doing fabulous. Again, if you need to take a round off, there's no worries in that. I take boxing classes on my own sometimes for fitness, and I know how hard they can be, right? So you do your best, whatever that is. Hands up, let's get back into it. We're gonna go for a double this time. Double left and double right. So this is more of a rhythm drill, right? For the Parkinson's, we love something with rhythm. We can kind of latch onto that movement and try and just replicate it left and right. So here we're forcing ourselves to use both sides of the brain. If I have maybe a left side or a right side that doesn't want to move as good, right? You have to try. It's better to do it than not to do it. So get it moving. Try and match that arm. Good. Five more. Four. Three. Two. One. Time. All right. Nice job. Excellent. Take some good deep breaths. Walk it out. Even if it feels like those legs are not moving as quick as you want them to, you know, you have to really try. That's the one thing that I need from you guys is to try your best and you will feel better from doing that. So take a nice deep breath. Let it out. And let's do a little walking forward and back. A couple steps with the hands up. I go forward, maybe I'm jogging almost. And then I move it back. Good. And if you don't feel comfortable moving forward and back, you can just do it in place. Good. I'm almost turning it into more of a jog here. Very good. And if you're not a jogger, you can walk. It's up to you. About a couple more, three more. One, good, keeping the hands up. I'm almost moving those hands a little bit. Excellent, finding that coordination. Good, it's tough, it's tough. It's almost like a brain teaser, but we want that. We wanna work and connect our brain to our body. One more. And time, catch that breath. Very nice shot, excellent. Take some good deep breaths. So in my in-person classes, you know, I get to know people more. My Zoom classes, I get to know people more. As I get to know your ability, I can safely and confidently push you harder or not, right? So since I don't know you guys like that, you're going to have to be the one to decide when you're able to work out at a higher pace or when you might have to tone it down. But I don't know your ability just yet. So if you're ready to keep going, we're going to try and keep going here. If you need a little break, then you can take 30 seconds or a minute off. Our hands are going to go up, and we're going to do a little combination. We're going to go forward, forward, side to side. And then in boxing terminology, I would just say jab, cross, hook, and hook. But to make it more simple, I just say forward, forward, side to side. For some people who have never boxed before. Ready? Let's go. Forward, forward, side to side. If you want to throw it quick, you're more than welcome to. Ready? One, two, three, four. I'll go slow for you guys to follow again. One, two, side to side, three, and four. There we go. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Excellent. And go. One, two, three, four. Let's do about three more of those. One, two, three, four. Two more, one, two, three, four. Good boxers, one more. One, two, three, four. All right, shake it loose a little bit. I'm gonna touch base on the fighting stance really quick. So this is kind of a neutral stance, an exercise stance. If you wanna be more like boxer stance, one leg on the front, one leg on the back. I think about almost being on like a surfboard, but my toes are more so facing forward and I have a good staggered stance. I don't want to be on a tightrope. If my legs look like they're on a tightrope, then I'm going to be losing balance. So I step them out a little bit and my hands are up. Now I'm in more of a fighting stance. I try on one side and maybe you rock it forward and back a little bit. You bend the knees and you're learning to shift your weight forward and back. 
All right, so you're building the strength on the legs. Keep your core strong. Maybe as I shift forward, I jab, I throw a punch off the front hand. Jab, good. Jab, let's do 10. One, two, try to get to 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Excellent. Let's try to switch it up. Try to switch my feet. That means the other leg is going in front, the other leg in the back, and my other hand. Before I punch, I just want to rock forward and back. See how I feel with that movement. Can I support my weight? Can I move forward and back? Do my legs feel strong? If they do, add a punch in there. Jab, good. Jab, jab. Go five. One, good. Two, three, four, and five. And right away going into a march. If I need a break or a water break, we gladly can take one. If not, we try to keep moving. Nice deep breaths in the nose. Out the mouth and time. All right, very nice. I don't know if it's raining where you guys are at. It's kind of drizzling on and off over here. What a great setting that is for boxing, right? It's like boxing is gritty sometimes. It's hard work. It's, it's not going to be pretty a lot of times, but you need to work hard. And you guys know that it's going to make you feel better. So let's, let's, let's get into the nitty gritty. Hands up. We're going to do some more boxing here. We're going to go a high hook, a high hook. And then to do two hooks low, I'm gonna kind of bend a little bit, strengthen those legs, hook low, hook low. Good. So try to go high, high, then low, and low. Excellent. And the idea after I throw them low is to stand back up. I don't wanna compromise my posture for too often. High, high, low, low, and up. High, high, low, low, and up, high, high, low, low, and up. Now we know the drill, I just count to four. Ready, go, one, two, three, four. And then again, one, two, three, four. Good, stand up nice and tall. One, two, three, four. Couple more, one, two, three, four. Let's do one more, boxers, one. Two, three, four, and time. Walk it out. Very nice job. Go for a walk. Try to keep a posture, good posture. Sit if you need to. Breathe, steal some water. You guys are doing awesome. Very good. So we breathe in the nose, out the mouth. And earlier, we did some steps. We did these steps in our jumping jacks for stepping side to side. Now we're going to step side to side with our hands up like a boxer. I'm stepping and I come back. And if you want, you can kind of lean on that leg, bend the knee, feel strong there. Good. And eventually I'll maybe I'll punch as I go. I step and give a little punch. Good. So that takes a little coordination. Good. A little practice. It's not going to be perfect right away. The more you do it, you'll feel better. Keep going. Whatever pace you like, step in the punch. And if for me, stepping and punching gets confusing, no problem. I'll just go back to stepping. Don't have to punch. I'd rather you guys do a movement rather than not doing any movements. Good. Five more. One. Remember, keep breathing. Two. Three. Four. Five. All right, nice job. Excellent. Now, if some of you guys have boxed before, you hit targets, that's a pretty good workout. You hit a heavy bag, that's a pretty good workout. Because we're doing less equipment, we have to get our cardio up. So we're gonna do a spinning of the hands, like a speed bag, okay? The speed bag is that small bag the boxers hit. You wanna roll those hands nice and quick for about 20 seconds. If this is simple and you think you can jog and roll or step and roll, try to do that too. Oh my goodness. Make those hands go so fast, that camera can't even see those hands. Come on. I don't want the camera to even see the hands. I want it to look like a blur. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good job. Here's a hand. Breathe. Sneak water if you need to. Walk it out. 
but give yourself 15 seconds off and we're gonna try another round. Very, very nice. Breathe, good deep breaths. Excellent, excellent. So this time, you know, I know it's a lot for the first workout back for some of us, or maybe our first boxing workout. My goal is not to overwhelm you. I wanna make it an easy transition back in, but it's always good to have a nice workout. If you can do more of that, then I want a stationary round this time where my legs are not moving, but just my arms are spinning. And I kind of do that movement side to side. And I'm rolling it left and I'm rolling it right. Good. Try to go for 30 seconds. You already went for five. So that's 25 more seconds. Come on. Breathe and roll. You guys got this. Good. Awesome. Are we moving quicker than we did when we started the workout? Are we feeling like we got more energy? Maybe I'm getting tired. I know I'm doing something though, moving my body. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, counting at home if you can. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right. Catch that breath. And as you rest, you can walk, you can stretch, you can sit. I I know that your other coaches or maybe anyone that you've talked to in the past would, you know, ask you to project the voice. It's because we want to keep those voice muscles strong, just like any other muscles in our body. So that's why we do our counting. We count loud to use the voices. Let's kind of move the shoulders a little bit. Let's just check in on the shoulders real quick before we do any more punching. Let's raise them up and out and then back down. And if you happen to have gloves on, then they're acting as a little weight. Strengthening those shoulders even more. Four, three, two, one. All right, nice job. Let's do presses up. These are a hard press because you have to raise the arm up. If it's bothersome to your shoulder, you can go in front of yourself. If not, you go up and down. Up and down. Keep going. Up and down. Four more. One. Good. Two, go. three, and four. All right. So we're going to go two more rounds of boxing curriculum where I can show you something. And the last round, we'll do a freestyle round. So let's follow together the combination. You guys went forward, forward, side to side. Do you think we can add an uppercut and an uppercut? Right? My goal is not to make it confusing, but you guys are smart enough to follow. Straight for two, side to side for two, and then up for two. Good uppercuts, nice job, nice. And again, bend those legs of those uppercuts if you like. So one, two, side to side, three, four, up, five, and six. Good, try it again, straight one and two, side three and four, up five and six. Very good. Big movements. Ready? One, two, side three, four, up five and six. Two more. Ready? One, two, side three, four, up five and six. One more. Go one, two, side three, four, up five and six. And try to move those feet. We want to keep it going since we're on the home stretch. We want to keep it going right now. Try to move those feet for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. Keep going. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Very good. Catch that breath. The next round I call follow the leader. So I'm just going to be doing a bunch of different movements. And you guys are going to follow along. You're going to try and catch on to what I'm doing. I'm not going to make it too confusing. And then maybe at the end will be a little tricky for the last couple seconds. So hands up. It's our last round together. Then you guys get to do a freestyle round. So let's start moving here. Try and do what I'm doing. Good. Excellent. I like the strong footwork. Legs are strong and I get it to uppercuts now. Good. Uppercuts. Good. Breathe. Stay ready. Stay attentive. And our hooks now, side to side, throwing those hooks. Good. Good. Maybe I go straight now, straight down the middle. 
Okay. One hand only. One hand only. Down the middle. One hand only. Good. Other hand now. Other side. Good. And try to punch it alternating and move it forward and back a little bit. Sorry about that. I'm alternating and I'm moving back and I'm moving forward. This is a hard one. This is a hard one. Try to move the arms, move the legs, move the arms, and stay right there and go speed back. Speed back for 10, 9, 8, 7. Move those legs now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and time. Very nice job. Walk it off. Excellent. Only one more round of box. You're doing very good. Let's breathe it in and out a couple times. Keep our posture, keep ourselves moving. And again, addressing any part of the body that I need to, everyone's different. So when I say freestyle boxing, it's like free play. You're gonna do whatever comes to mind. You can go straight, you can throw uppercuts, you can go hooks, you can move around a little bit, you can move your feet. Just imagine like you're a boxer right now, have some fun and you kind of got to get into it for 30 seconds, be creative, anything you want. And if you don't know what to do, you can just follow me. Ready? Hands are up, our last round, and go. Punch them out, whatever you got. Move the arms. Breathe in. Working hard. Good, keep that going. Excellent, excellent. Good, you're about halfway through, halfway through. I like what I see, we see some good fighters here. Excellent. 10 seconds, 10, count it. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Put those hands up, put those hands up. Give yourself a hand. All right, take the gloves off. We're going to cool down a little bit. Okay, we should do a little cool down, just like we did a little warm up. So get yourself water and we'll start that in a minute, okay? So we tell the body during the warm up that we're about to embark on some exercise and we want it to stand strong for us. We want the blood to flow. And then we have a good exercise and we cool down to let the body know it's time to start recovering. So we're gonna do the same idea as the warm up to slow our movement down. And breathe, a lot of good breathing. And everyone's gonna be different, but the studies have changed over the last 20 years, excuse me, up and down to people thinking moderate exercise was good, but they're realizing that the more intense the exercise, the better the results for, for Parkinson's. And down, it roll your wrists a little bit. So it's tough to do an intense exercise, but also be safe and to stay within my ability. But that's where I come in. I try my best to help you guys Get a good intense workout that's going to help you, but not too much that's going to hurt you. Shake the arms out. Maybe I interlock the fingers and I stretch it out. And if you've been working out before, slowly raise them up, then you know maybe what it feels like to be at the end of your workout, put it down. Or maybe if you pull the muscle or something. So you got to stay focused too. If it's something that you think you should do differently, I don't know on my end what that is. You're going to have to realize, oh, my shoulder, my back, and you got to adjust accordingly. Let's do a little stretch forward. My feet are together, my hands go to the thighs. I try to keep the legs straight and slide the hands down to the knees and then to the shins. And if I can hold it down for five, that's good. Four, three, two, one. Slowly bring it up. Nice deep breath. Sometimes with the level change, we can feel a little different, right? So breathe, get that blood back, move it around a little bit. Let's stretch the hand out. A stop sign with my hand, and I pull my fingers back, and this stretches my tendons here underneath my forearm a little bit, my wrist, and shake it out a little bit. Other hand in front, I pull the hand back, good stretch. And down, and then I like to, do just a bit more for the knees. 
So kind of how we started, just moving my knees left and right. I call these steers. It's kind of like a steer, just kind of bobbing the knees just a little bit here to get a small movement around the knees and up nice and tall. And then with the hands, almost like I'm opening a jar, I turn my wrists a little bit. I don't open too many jars. I like pickles, you know, once in a while, but it's just to move our wrists pretty much. I'm just trying to get you guys to move your wrists. We all know how to open a jar. Other side, other hand twist. Good. So we know that when we don't move, you know, the body gets stiff. That's true for anybody. For Parkinson's, it's going to be maybe, maybe even harder, for sure harder. So you always want to keep moving. Open and close the hands. Good. And then everyone's going to be different, right? Everyone has different symptoms, but exercise is good for all of us. For me, I know I like it. It's a mood enhancer for me. If I can be, you know, a nicer person, because after exercise, why not? You know, the world needs a nicer version of me. But shake it out, shake it out. We're all going to benefit in some way. Hands on the side. Let's breathe. Now, this is how I really kickstart my recovery. I take some really good deep breaths, sending my body into recovery mode, almost like yoga. So I'm gonna inhale the hands all the way up. Good deep breath, I hold it and I exhale them down. Good, we're gonna do one more inhale up. And now, and now everybody breathe at a different pace. So please, last one, breathe at your own pace. And now, and time. Give yourself a hand, guys. Very nice job. Excellent. Usually at the end of my workouts, I know we're going to do a little Q&A, but at the end of my workouts, we tend to try and do a chant, okay? Reason number one I do like a chant is because I think it's a good way to have some closure, brings the group together. It's a strong way to finish the exercise. Number two, if you forgot to count during the workout, I know for sure that when you do the chant, I'm going to ask you to be loud because I want you to use those voice muscles. We don't want a softening on the voice. We want to be able to project it when we need it. So again, name of the program is Rock Steady. Usually pretty simple at the end. I say one, two, three. Everybody says Rock Steady, nice and loud. We can't put everyone's microphone on now, but I'm going to trust that you're saying it nice and loud. If someone's still sleeping next to you, wake them up with this chant. Come on, on three, Rock Steady. Ready? One, two, three, Rock Steady. Rock Steady. Thank there you, you. Good job. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. A normal workout would go a little bit longer probably, but I want to make sure we have enough time. And again, don't want to um, kick your guys' butt too hard on the first workout. Okay. We're going to remove the spotlight so everybody can come on. Um, thank you, Dean. That was terrific. I really missed, I missed the thank classes. Uh, live class. There's nothing like a live class class best exercise I ever had. It was the best shape I was in. And here we are almost three years later and I can't stand the shape I'm in. So I need it. We need it back. Um, questions? You just raise your hand or go ahead and talk. Any questions? Yeah, Jane. So Jane, I, go ahead. Hi. So I've taken, so I've taken a couple of different boxing classes, one through the Y and one through online. I never know what to do with my feet. Um, one person stretch it, stresses, so if you're, when you're doing the forward punches, that the right foot is back, I guess that's the fighter stance, and the left foot is front, and she has us do both, both of those in that particular stance, so are you not supposed to switch your feet so that the left one is back and the right one is front when you go to the other hand? No, I'm not so great. Is your name Jane? Yes. Okay, great question. First of all, I teach because I know that you guys need for Parkinson's to work left and right side. So right. I always want you to do what you do on the left, what you do on the right. So, but when you're standing there, traditionally when you're punching, you don't want to move your feet too much. You want to plant the feet and you're kind of just moving the arms and the feet are staying still. That's going to give you a good base. If I were to move my feet every time, you could do that but you might feel a little more wobbly. They're probably teaching you from a traditional boxing perspective where they want your feet to be real solid and alternating hands. Me, I always wanna give you what you do on your left to do on your right. 
That's why if you don't like the fighting stance, I don't necessarily require it. This is a fighter stance, but if somebody wants to stand side by side and do it in a neutral stance, I'd be fine with that. Um, but you know, it's really personal preference. You seem to be doing it for a while. So at this point, I would tell you whatever you feel best doing. Right, okay, thanks. Of course. Okay, okay. Uh, Lita? Hi there, thank you for the class. I live in Northern Vermont and the closest actual gym for this, closest rock steady boxing is about a 60 miles away. How does wow. this class that you've just given us compare to being in a gym? It's very similar. The only thing that you're missing, Lita, is the contact with the bag or the punching mitts. The one thing that I, there's pros and cons. That would be a con. You know, I would say in person is nicer because you get to hit the punching mitt. You also got to see friends, talk to them. But here you have a bunch of people you can talk with too. The pros of an online class versus an in-person class is that I can kind of keep you moving the whole time because I don't have to, space people out set up equipment get you on different stations we kind of just have our space and i just keep you moving the whole time so the online class is a little bit more movement but the in-person class some of the exercises you'll get to really hit a bag and it feels a little um, more intense in that way so if you ever hit a bag before you know how that feels some people don't like it um, but that would be the only difference is hitting an actual bag or a target versus doing it more in place and just keeping yourself moving the whole time. Great, thank you. My pleasure, of course. Anybody else? No other questions? Okay, well, thank you. This was terrific. My pleasure, um, my pleasure. I'll tell you guys, usually for online classes, I try to make them about 45, 50 minutes and in person, I have to make that same class about 55 minutes because I have to give time for a water break and you know moving around equipment, but it's usually the same workout. Um, and for the lady in Vermont, Lita, I actually do a Zoom group with people in Indiana three times a week. So I'm on Eastern time. If you're ever interested, let me know, I can help you with that. And then for anybody else, um, you know, I, I offer Zoom classes. We could do one as a group if you guys ever wanted to. And we're planning on starting one in person um, on the west side in January. So I know we're all over the place, but if anyone needs, I'm happy to help. You guys are, are wonderful. And whatever you do, whether it be boxing or you know any kind of exercise class, keep yourself moving because you know how important that is. I don't have to tell you, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And I wish you guys all the best, okay? Dean, can you put your uh, contact information or the, uh, in the chat? And we have a question from Kim. I have a question. question. Um, when you do your Zoom classes, how do you divide your uh, participants? Because um, I know Rocksteady has the levels one, two, and three, four. Do you right. have- so I, I'm not doing any levels. It's, I was doing that in the past. When the group gets really big, I love to split it into new levels. Right now, because it's not big enough to split it, it's a mixed level. And I just tell people, like I said, if you're in the chair and you have to do your jumping jack for the chair, you know, you're stepping your leg up. If you're standing, you can step. I try to offer modifications. Um, and we have a, a good mix of people. So that's the, that's the only difference now is when the group gets bigger, we would split it. We don't have a split level as of right now. It's interesting. I also coach and it's interesting because we've grown enough that we should split, but how do you tell one, two, how do you tell three fours that they're not good enough and they have well, to go I, one? That's, I've been through that. I've been through that before. Uh, I was actually going to show you guys. I was going through my stuff and I found this from March 9 of 2020. We were in the, oh yeah, I guess I got to turn this off. <laughs> Virtual thing off. We're in yeah, the we're in the day. Disappeared. <laughs> I know. I gotta turn this back off. We we're in the daily news, anyways, and we had a group. Our group of seventy five people. We had to do that, and they love seeing each other. So, this is how we did it. Okay, I had the classes back to back, one hour after the other, and the people I had level one and level two, and the first class was the people who were moving a little slower. I had the people in the second class, if they could come volunteer to work as helpers during that class to give them a job to do, 
They held mitts, which made a better experience for the level one people. They felt like they were still hanging out with their friends. And then the level one people are done with their workout. They go home and the level two stay for their amped up, you know, faster paced workout. Um, and if they don't want to wow. stay to volunteer, they can't spend two hours a day at the gym. I, I get that. They just come for their level. And when the class level one leaves and level two comes, both classes got to spend about five or 10 minutes of overlap time together. They still got to see each other. And I think everyone understands it's just for their best interest. You know, you just want them to, to have the best quality workout. And that's what you got to tell them. So Great. if my group, you know, was big enough, I would do that. You know, that's the way I would. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a good suggestion. My pleasure. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Ashley, can you see? Uh, I'm going to put my contact in the chat because I realized I didn't do that. Okay. Okay. All right. So normally, Dean, we give a virtual tiara, but obviously uh, tiara doesn't work for you unless, unless you want one. <laughs> But thank you. Um, upcoming things. Uh, we still have a few scholarships available. We're, we announced nine recipients the other day. And in January 1st, we'll probably announce the rest. We have, I think, enough money for another five or six people. Uh, this is for four, uh, first time attendees only. And if you are interested and you have not applied, uh, send me an email at twitchywomanwpc at gmail.com. And if you're interested in helping to underwrite a scholarship, uh, send me an email and we'll talk. Next slide. Um, these are the nine women who are beneficiaries, several of whom are with us today. There we go. Michelle, Kim, who's with us, Elisa, Susan, Eileen, Angela, Karen, Joanne, and Bonnie, those are the nine people who have uh, submitted uh, requests for scholarship. We will be having a WhatsApp group. I think Ethel's going to set that up so that we can get to know each other. Um, let just uh, let's go stop the screen sharing for a second. I want to see a show of hands. How many of you are interested in going, whether it's with a scholarship or not? Okay, just two of you. Okay, I'm sure there's some more. Oh, Andrea's going, I think. Um, anybody else interested in going? Thumbs up. Okay, well, we will make sure we'll be talking, we'll be getting together online prior to the uh, Congress to, so that everybody knows who everybody else is that's going to be there. And we're going to plan to get together a couple times, I hope, during that week. It's going to be wonderful. Okay, uh, let's go back. Thank to you for that, screen. Sharon. I, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, let's go back. So the next slide is da, 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 da. click. Okay. So uh, we are not meeting again till next year. This is it. This is the last meeting of the year because of the schedule of the holidays. Uh, so January 15th, we are having a, a meeting with Kirk Hall, who is an expert on palliative care. This is not hospice care. Palli there's a difference. Uh, and he will talk to us about that. Palliative care is basically, you know, the care that we need to, to make us feel good and to thrive. And then if you like this thing, and especially if you're going to the WPC, uh, Judy Spencer, who's the director of the World Parkinson's Congress Choir will be joining us. And we will be singing, or she will, I will not be singing, but anybody else that wants to can sing with her. Um, I have some other things scheduled. Uh, we have a speech therapist who has contacted me. We're going to do something on traveling that I will leave, a discussion that I will leave since I seem to be traveling a lot again these days. And um, I can't even remember. I've been contacted by a number of people. So we've got lots of things coming up in, in January and February, probably through March I'm scheduled. So uh, it's pretty amazing what, what has come together. Uh, next slide. That's probably the last one. And um, we still have our chat groups. We had a very intense meeting this morning with for a Twitchies with our partners. And Tuesday mornings, uh, anybody can join with Shelly. And I believe that that should be the last slide. Yes, and that's just our uh, learn, play, and thrive together. 
I will tell you, I'm going to be sending out a letter, an email to every everyone in this group um, that is a solicitation. If you want to, if you feel that we have helped you in any way, I hope that you will support our programs. Uh, it is totally volunteer run, but we do have expenses. And um, if you're interested in con contributing, you, can, you will be able to do so through that email that you get. Otherwise, I want everybody to have a wonderful, wonderful holiday, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, or whatever you celebrate. Uh, Happy New Year and uh, go blue. They, they won Big Ten yesterday. We'll see, hopefully see them in the, the uh, playoffs, in the final. Hope they're number one. And uh, we'll see all of you in January. And if you feel like staying on for a few minutes to talk, please do so. Otherwise, we're going to turn off the recording and uh, just chat if you want to. Thank you, Sharon. Great class. Mm -hmm.